Hey y'all, Frosty Brills here. Yeah, I just want to address a concern I have. Um, you guys might all agree with me. This is a Nintendo game. At least back in the 80s. Look at it. Still, for being how old it is, it looks brand spanking new. And when I was a kid, my games always looked like this. I never had any problems. I always put them back away. Even if I had to put them away, they stayed in the system or stayed on top of the system like this. You know, just stacked them up or put them in a... had a case to put them in at one time. But most people did this with their games. Yes, maybe I lost the manual or I threw away the packaging because back then you didn't know that they'd be worth a bunch of money these days. But my main concern is how the hell does this happen? I mean, what did they do to this game? I mean, I can see maybe writing your name on it, so if somebody steals it from your collection, you could be like, hey, go to your friend's house. That's, that's my game. My name's on there. You stole that from me. I can see maybe doing that. I did do that, too. Actually, what I did was I actually used to just carve my initials right into it. I did that with my CDs, too, after a few of them got stolen. But anyways... For one, you don't need it written that big. But two is, how did the label get like this? I mean, did some people just not take care of their games? They would just, you know, throw them wherever they freaking felt like it. Just, well, 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 I'm done with that game. Time to grab another one. Okay, I want to play Barbie now. Look at this one. I mean, the back looks fine, but this one? You smell it? It's got a stale ammonia flavor, which means... Either A, the original owner of this stored their games where their cat litter box is, and this fell into it, and the cat just took a pee right on it, because it was in its way, it was in its litter box. Or, seeing how this is a girl's game, maybe a boyfriend and girlfriend, she wouldn't stop playing it, so he decided to piss her off and piss on it himself. I don't know. I, I'm still debating if I should just rip this label off and make it no label, because it looks like crap, it, it's really easy to come off because of the P slash water damage, as you can see right there, I can easily peel this right off and just make it a blank game, make my own label, I don't know. But, I mean, this I got from a lot of other games, and it does work, the game works fine, it's just that, how do they get like that? I mean, this one too, water damaged. I mean, did they just use these things when they were done playing with them? Oh. I'm going to put a... I'm just going to use it as a coaster. I mean, seriously, how did the... I mean, like, even when I was a kid, if I played video games while snacking on, say, like, Cheetos or something, I made sure I had, like, a wet cloth there to wipe my freaking hands off on in between gaming. I mean, here's a Super Nintendo game. Nice, clean... I mean, it's not that hard to take care of games. I, I don't understand why so many people do. But, I mean, look at this one. I mean, did people and this one... Well, this one actually looks like some kid tried peeling off the sticker. But on the back here... No, nope, back here... This one, this one's water damaged, too. I mean, I could see maybe if their house got flooded and their stuff was in the basement. Okay, I understand that. But, I mean... Another example. Here's a Genesis game. Why do they always have to put stickers on the freaking labels? And you know what's really funny is these ain't stickers from a rental store. These are stickers from a game store that used to be around here called Game and CD Exchange. Not only do they put the stickers all over this thing and ruin the label, as you can see, they put them on the dang instruction manual. It's like if you're so worried about people stealing this stuff before you could sell it, you put this on the shelf. And you take these and put them in a box or put them in the back room or put them behind the counter. So when somebody brings this up, yes, I'd like to purchase this, you'd pull these out, put it back in there for them, like so. And there you go. I, I don't understand why that was so hard for some companies to do. Another example. Really? Look at all the room down here. You could have put that sticker. Same with Super Nintendo. 
Look at all the room down here on the back. You could have put this rental sticker instead of plastering it right on the paper, the sticker, the label. That makes it even harder to get it off because of that. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I don't know. I just wanted to rant about that. I mean, I don't care because these games are so old and I got these for really dirt cheap. But it just boggles my mind on how some people can live with themselves after doing that to a game. It's like, especially if this happened back in the day. Because, I mean, if this happened back in the day, this was a $40 game brand new. Would you treat something else that you paid, you call it $40 or more? I mean, it's just like disc games today, too. It's like, you go to a used store to buy Muse, yes, somebody originally bought it for 50 60 bucks, and it scratched the shit. I mean, really? Did they just play Frisbee with them after they beat the game and then decide to sell it? Another thing that I can't stand, I could see Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Gear, they came in a cardboard box. Most people threw the box away, which means you kept the instruction manual, but it could get lost or something. But when a game comes with a place to store the instruction manual, why is it so hard to find Genesis games with instruction manual? Or for that matter, PlayStation 2 or Sega CD or... I mean, it had a place to store it. It has a nice, nifty little place to store the book when you're done reading it. I don't know, maybe people didn't... Especially with Genesis games, just getting just the game. I mean, I can see maybe people, they didn't have room. Because, I mean, that shelf is too deep, and I'm out of room. Now, if I threw all the cases out, and threw all the booklets out, I could fit probably five times as much Genesis games on those two shelves by just stacking them like this or putting them like this. But still, it begs the question, and why did people do that? Another example. Nice little storage spot for your instruction manual. What are you doing with it? Like, I even still keep it. All my DVDs are in a thing, but I didn't throw all the cases away. They're in a box downstairs in the basement. That way, if I decide I want to sell it, I put it back in the case, and then I can sell it as a complete game. Another thing that's really stupid, too, is GameStop has brands making new games missing the case. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, sinuses. That didn't sound good, but it's all draining down my throat. Anyways, GameStop. Brands make a new PlayStation 3 games. It's by 360s. No case. Do they buy games? Somebody comes in with a stack of freaking PlayStation 3 games like this. Oh, here we go. Do they actually buy them that way? Or are they just throwing away the cases because they don't got enough room because they're in malls and stuff and their stores ain't big enough? That one I'd like to... I should actually go there and ask them why they do that. I don't know if anybody has asked them that. I don't know. But, oh, this video went on a lot longer. But, my main question is, how does the game go from this to this? The, obviously, people didn't take care of them if they go to this, but why wouldn't you? You paid $40 for this thing back in the day. If this happened back then, you paid 40 bucks. And back then, that was like a month's worth of allowance just to buy one game. You would take care of that dang thing. Unless you're rich when you were a kid, I guess. But, alright. Well, this went on a lot longer than I thought it would do. So, I'm going to end it here. Let me know what you think in, your, what you think in the comments below. Alright. Frosty Brothers.